This video is to show you how to work the mastery level problems in the AC mesh equations tutorial in Circuit Tutor. Um, two problems are required at this level, but they're both similar, so I'll just work one example. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so um, we're going to begin by observing that there is a current source, so we will need a current constraint equation. So let's start with that, because that's very simple. And that's going to constrain, in this case, the two mesh currents that go through that source, which would be I2 and I4. So we we'll need a difference of mesh currents there is equal to simply the value of that source. And the one that goes in the direction of the current source is I2. So it'll be I2 minus I4, which since I4 goes in the opposite direction of the current arrow here, um, that's equal to the value of the source I1S, which is 2 angle 180 degrees. Now that's all the current sources we have, so we're done with current constraint equations. Um, so next, we notice that there is a dependent source. This is a dependent voltage source, and it's a current control voltage source because it depends on this current value Ix, which is the current down there through the 8 ohm resistor. Um, but when you multiply amps, of course, times ohms, you do get a voltage, so the value of this source is in volts. That is a voltage source. So we do need an equation for its control variable, which is Ix. Anytime you have a dependent source, you must write a control variable equation to have a complete set of equations. So we'll select control variable equation from the menu. And since the control variable is Ix, we'll choose the I term equals. And now because we're doing mesh analysis, the Ix, which is this current down through this resistor, is just going to be a difference of mesh currents. It's very simple in this case. So I1 goes in the same direction as Ix, and then I2 goes in the opposite direction so that we have to subtract that. So I1 minus I2 is the net current going down through that resistor, which is in fact defined as Ix. So that's our current constraint equation. Oh, and I'm sorry, I forgot to fill in the Ix there. So we have to fill that in. And we'll check that, and that's correct. Okay, now we have a SOT voltage and a SOT current, so let's go and do the SOT branch voltage first. Um, and that SOT voltage appears across a current source. Now that's actually a little bit tricky here. So in order to figure that out, we say, well, what is the voltage across a current source? It's whatever it needs to be. And of course, we don't know what that is until we've solved the entire problem. So question is, what do we do? Well, if you have a question about what to do in mesh analysis, the answer is nearly always use KVL, because mesh analysis is purely based on KVL. So um, we could apply KVL going around some loop that contains that current source, like for example this mesh, or we could use the other mesh on the other side of it, which would be this one. Um, it doesn't really matter too much here which we do. Um, I think I'll just pick this one. It, uh, the system will accept either of those two choices um, as long as you write a correct equation. So I'm going to just write an equation here. Um, so I'm going to use this path here. And so this voltage drop basically will be across a J5 ohm inductor and it has two mesh currents going through it. So I'll need a term of this nature. And then this is a current controlled voltage source. So I will need a term like this. Okay, so if we have I4 going into that, then the net current to the left there is I4 minus I1. And by passive sign convention, that's going to make this a plus and this a minus. And that's going to be consistent with this being plus. The plus is connected to the plus. So that'll have the same sense. So that'll be a positive sign there. And now we multiply that times J5 ohms. So in other words, that current makes this more positive than this. And that's going to contribute to this being positive and this being negative, right? Because this is plus and this is negative. The negative side is connected over here and the plus side is connected over here. Now, in this case, this term basically is going to do the opposite because we have the negative side connected to the plus and the plus side connected to the negative. So here we're going to need a minus sign because that has opposite sense to the voltage we're interested in, which is V naught. And then we put in the value, which is six ohms times Ix. Remember to fill in the Ix this time. Um, now, if you don't understand how to get that, you could actually write a KVL equation around the loop. 
um, and add voltage drops. So one way of doing that would be to put this over on the right hand side and then put a zero on the left hand side. That's another way of writing this. And then um, that's actually going to be voltage. Um, let's see. Well, we need, uh, since I put it on the other side, we need to make that a negative V naught. And so that would actually be a voltage rise. So we're now adding, uh, let's see, as we go clockwise, we would be adding a voltage uh, rise. And then we need the other voltage uh, rises. Okay, but we could put this in various forms, but the idea is basically the same, that we're writing a KVL equation around this loop. Okay, now we need a SOT branch current here, I naught. And that's very simple. Um, the SOT branch current that we're looking for is over here through this inductor, and that's just given by a mesh current in mesh analysis. So in fact, it's going to be I3, and I3 points in the same direction as I naught, so that's very easy. I naught is just equal to I3. If they pointed in opposite directions, of course, we'd have a minus sign, but we don't have one here. Okay, so we're done with the SOT variable equations. Now we need to write KVL equations for each mesh, or in some cases, a super mesh. So let's choose KVL equations. And let's start with mesh one. And there we're gonna have a total of four terms. And we have a resistor with one current through it, one mesh current, and then one with two. So we need that. And another one with two, another one of those. And finally, the voltage source drop, which would be a fixed voltage, and those sum to zero. So let's go around clockwise in the direction of the mesh current. So the first drop will be across the 9 ohm resistor. So that's just going to be I1 times 9 ohms. And the next one will be I1 minus I2. Or I'm sorry, I1 minus I4, I mean, times the J5 ohms. Because it's the net current to the right there that will multiply the J5 inductive impedance. Then as we go down, we're going through the 8 ohm, and that's I1 minus I2, since I2 flows up through that resistor, and that's times the 8 ohms, and that'll give us the voltage drop plus and minus. And finally, we go back to our starting point, and this, in fact, is a voltage drop because we're going from the positive side of the voltage source to the negative side, and so we'll have a plus sign here, and we just put in the value of the voltage source, so that's going to be 3 angle 0 degrees. Obviously, if the polarity of the source were reversed, then we'd have a minus sign here. Okay, that was for node one. Now, uh, sorry, mesh one, I mean. Uh, now for mesh two, well, we have an issue there because mesh two contains a current source. And you say, what is the voltage across a current source? Well, we don't know. Now, we did just figure it out, admittedly, from this equation, but we're not going to use that because that would be redundant to other information that we already have. So basically, we just don't know that voltage drop, and we're going to try to avoid it. So what we do is when we have two meshes connected by a current source, as always, we use the idea of a super mesh. We make a larger loop that's going to go around here that's going to combine those two meshes together so the current source is now interior to that. And therefore, we're not going across that uh, current source in writing our KVL equation, and we don't need to know its voltage for this purpose. And that will provide us an equation that we need to have enough equations to solve for our unknowns. So in doing that, we see we're going to have, let's see, one, two elements there with two currents. And we're going to have uh, the voltage of the current control voltage source. And then we're going to have another element with two mesh currents, which is this uh, capacitor. So we'll need another one of those terms, and that will be equal to zero. So now I'm going to start at the lower left corner down here and go up, so that will be I2 minus I1, the net current up times the 8 ohm resistor, I'm sorry, 8 ohms, and then I'm going to go over to the left here now, going clockwise, and so that current that goes in that direction is I4 minus I1, times uh, J5 ohms, which is the inductive impedance. Now I'm going to go up. So again, I started here. I'm going like this. I'm going to go up through the dependent source, which is the current control voltage source. 
And notice that that's actually a voltage rise because we have the negative sign and then the plus sign. So it's going to higher voltage. So we need a minus sign to get the voltage drop, which is what I'm trying to add. So minus, and then we fill in uh, the six ohms, oops, six ohms times Ix. And then finally we come back and we don't go through the current source. Instead, we go through the capacitor to get back to our starting point down here. So that would be I2 minus I3 times the capacitive impedance of negative J1, or just, just negative J is fine. So that's correct for that super mesh consisting of meshes two and four combined. And then finally, we'll do mesh three, which doesn't have a current source. Therefore, we can write a KVL equation just for that mesh. And it's gonna have one element uh, with two currents and then two elements with one current. So we need those terms. And starting in the lower left, going through the capacitor, we have I3 minus I2, and that current up times the capacitor impedance of negative J ohms. And then we have, going to the right here, we have I3 times another capacitive impedance of negative J8. Remember those capacitive impedances are always negative imaginary numbers. This is one over J mega C, and one over J is the equivalent of negative J, is why that works out that way. And finally, um, we have I3 times J5 ohms, which would be the last term going down here. And we're back to our starting point. Let me check that equation. And that should now be all of the necessary equations. So we'll click no more equations. And we'd then be given another problem, but I'm going to quit there um, since that's uh, an example. Thank you.